Today I will read from my Chinese scooter user manual. These manuals are written in Chinglish. That means someone in China translated it to English, but the grammar's way off so they're quite fun to read. I'm going to summarize things rather than actually reading them, so if you'd like to read it yourself, just go ahead and make me shut up by hitting that mute button. There are a lot of different makes and models of Chinese scooters, but have no fear, they're all pretty much the same. Preface. We produce this model by applying advanced technology in the world. This model is designed for downtown area and you will surely enjoy happy, interesting, and safe driving with it. <laughs> it will be interesting. Definitely not safe though. Motorcycle race is a kind of exciting sports. In order to keep your favorite motor in its best condition, you shall read this manual carefully before driving. This manual includes the proper maintain methods and maintenance, do as the following requirements, then your motorcycle will surely service for a longer time without malfunction. Here we have a table of contents. This manual is actually pretty good. They explain all the controls, it has pictures, and even a maintenance schedule. They list all the specs in a somewhat confusing and not accurate way, but I'll help you decipher it in this video. Okay, page one. Important notice about safety. If you ride this scooter, you will die. Don't touch the muffler when it's hot. Don't park on dry grass so you don't start a fire. Wear a helmet and hold the handlebars with both hands. That is so true. These scooters are very unstable. If the weight isn't centered on the scooter, the handlebars will wobble. It's funny they mention that. I've had a speed wobble on a couple of different scooters from the front wheel and fork coming loose from shitty build quality. If you get a speed wobble, grip the handlebars and grab the brakes. Page two, don't put cloth on the engine. It will start a fire. Don't smoke when you fill the gas. It will start a fire. Don't modify the scooter. It can affect the safety and void your warranty. Page three is a diagram of the outside of the scooter. It has the basic stuff, turn signals, headlights, a kickstand, and a center stand. Page four is another diagram. The oil dipstick is on the right side, just in front of the muffler. Page five, there's a rectangular cover just forward of the floorboard. If you open it up, you'll find the VIN number stamped into the frame. There's also some numbers stamped into the engine, but that's not the VIN. Page six, speedometer. The driving speed is expressed by miles per hour, and so is the odometer. That is definitely not true. These guys half-ass making scooters so hard that the speedometer rarely reads even close to what's actually happening. I used those radar speed limit signs and found my speedometer reads 15% slower than I'm actually going, and the trip meter reads 33% farther than I actually went. Basically, it just looks like a speedometer, but you can't actually measure anything with it. Also, don't trust the fuel gauge. Mine reads full for the first half tank of gas, then it drops really fast. When it says I have a little gas left, the engine dies because the tank is empty. Page seven, the switch on the right is your typical motorcycle kill switch. The key must be on and the kill switch must be in the run position for the scooter to start. Turning the key all the way left will engage the handlebar lock so nobody can steal your shitty scooter. Also, don't forget to take the key out. Page eight, you have to hold the brake lever for the start button to work. Don't run the starter for more than four seconds. Don't use the starter if your engine is already running. The left handlebar switch has your high and low beam headlights. Page nine, the left switch also has the horn and turn signals. To signal left, move the lever left. To signal right, move it to the right. To turn the signals off, push the lever in. Page 10, to engage the steering lock, turn the handlebars all the way left and turn the key left to the lock position. Don't lock the handlebars while riding. Don't park in a place where you'll block traffic. Use the ignition key to unlock the seat compartment and the gas cap. Use 90 octane or higher fuel. Page 11, to fill the gas, put the scooter on the center stand and far away from fire. Don't overfill the gas and close the gas cap when you're done. You should have the scooter on the center stand and hold the rear brake when you start the engine so it doesn't drive away from you. If the rear brake doesn't work, it can cause an accident. Page 12, when you start the engine, you may need to twist the throttle a quarter of a turn. Don't use the starter for more than four seconds at a time. If it's cold outside, let the engine warm up two to three minutes before riding. Don't start the engine indoors. You can also use the kickstart lever to start the engine. Page 13, push the scooter forward to get it off the center stand. Hold the rear brake so the scooter doesn't accidentally get away from you. Accelerate by twisting the throttle gradually. Page 14, to brake in your new engine, keep your speed below 35 miles an hour for the first 600 miles. Don't accelerate quickly and don't drive at the same speed for an extended period. Use both front and rear brakes to slow down. Don't brake hard on sharp turns. Don't brake hard in wet conditions. Stopping distance will be longer when it's raining. Page 15, when parking, use your turn signals, let go of the throttle, and use your brakes. Turn the key off after you stop, then put the scooter on the center stand. Turn the handlebars left and the key left to engage the steering lock. Don't forget to take the 
the key out of the ignition. Page 16. Place the scooter on the center stand to check the oil. The dipstick is located just in front of the muffler. Wipe off the dipstick and insert it. Don't screw it in. Check the level on the dipstick. If the oil is low, add 10W40 oil until it reads max on the dipstick. Make sure the scooter is on a flat surface when checking oil. If the engine is hot, you can get burnt by the muffler. Be careful. Page 17. When the fuel gauge reads low, add gas. Remember how I said these fuel gauges are bad? They're not accurate, but they're usually consistent. Figure out where empty is on your gauge. It's usually just above where it says empty. Check your brake fluid level on the right brake lever. There's a small window in it. Hold the handlebar straight when checking. If the fluid is low, check your front brake pads. Replace your brake fluid every 600 miles or once a year. Use only DOT3 brake fluid. Don't let the brake fluid get on paint or plastic parts. Page 18. Pull the left lever to check the rear brake. The lever should move a little bit more than an inch. Ride at low speed to test the rear brake. Tighten the nut at the rear brake cable down by the wheel if the brake is loose. Make sure the red light in the rear gets brighter when the brake is on. Check your turn signals too. Page 19. Tire pressure should be 26 psi front, 33 psi rear. Check the tread to make sure it isn't worn out. Check the shocks to make sure they work. I find this hilarious. Technically, these scooters don't have shocks. They're so cheap that they use a spring with no compression or rebound damping. If you've ever ridden a Chinese scooter over a speed bump, you may have noticed it bucks you off the seat. Suspension is not going to work on these death traps. Also check your horn, mirrors, and muffler before you ride. There's a good chance at least one of those is currently falling off. Page 20. Check to make sure your handlebars aren't falling off. Check your air filter every 600 miles. The air box has five screws holding it closed. You can use compressed air to clean your air filter. Don't spray oil into your air filter. Page 21. Your first oil change should be after 200 miles. After that, change the oil every 600 miles. Check the oil level every 300 miles and add oil if needed. Use 10W40 oil. The oil capacity is 0.8 quarts. Oil change procedure. Warm up the engine before you change the oil. Place the scooter on the center stand and remove the dipstick. Remove the oil drain plug located on the bottom of the engine. Clean the oil screen and reinstall. Fill 0.8 quarts of oil through the dipstick tube. Run the engine for 20 seconds, then check the oil level. Don't screw the dipstick in when checking the level. Change gear oil every six months or 3,000 miles. Ride the scooter before you change the gear oil. Place the scooter on the center stand and remove the gear oil drain and fill bolts located on the back lower part of the transmission by the rear wheel. Wait for gear oil to drain, then install the drain plug. Use a hose to fill 0.1 quarts of 90 weight gear oil into the fill plug. Remove the hose and let the extra gear oil come out of the fill hole. Reinstall the fill plug. The first gear oil change should be after 200 miles, then every 3,000 miles. Page 23. The recommended spark plug is the NGK C7HSA. Spark plug gap should be 23 to 27 thousandths of an inch or 0.6 to 0.7 millimeters. The scooter has a sealed lead acid battery that does not require adding water. Do not open the battery. If you don't ride the scooter for a long time, remove the battery and connect it to a trickle charger. If the fuse is blown, replace it with a 15 amp fuse. Page 24. When replacing electrical components, use the same type. This is important for the headlight. Scooter headlight bulbs look like car bulbs, but use 35 watts instead of 50 watts. Replace your fuel filter every six months. Make sure the engine is off and there is no fire near the scooter. Page 25. This is the maintenance chart. Oil changes every 600 miles, valve adjustments every 1200 miles, new fuel filter and gear oil every 3000 miles. Inspect everything often. Page 26. The infamous malfunction page. When the scooter malfunctions, take it to the service shop. If the engine doesn't start, check to see if there's any fuel. If the fuel is empty, add fuel. Make sure you're using the proper starting procedure. Check to see if there's a problem on other parts. Basically check the entire scooter or just throw it in the dumpster and buy a Yamaha. Page 27 is the wiring diagram. This is actually very useful. There are two main types of systems. Some scooters use a DC CDI and others use AC. If your headlight turns on with the ignition switch, you have a DC CDI. If the headlight only works when your engine is running, you have an AC CDI. The magneto charges the battery and generates all alternating current or AC. It then goes to a rectifier that turns it into direct current or DC. DC is required to charge the battery and make the electrical system work. On some scooters, some of that AC power goes directly to the ignition module, CDI, and the headlight. If you do a Google image search for GY6 diagram, you can find a wiring diagram for your scooter. Page 28. Specifications. The GY6 engine is a forced air-cooled engine. That means it has a plastic fan and a shroud around the engine to keep it cool. Your 125 or 150 cc scooter will have between 5 and 8 horsepower. Power. The top speed will be between 45 and 65 miles per hour. It uses a belt drive CVT or continuously variable transmission. Fuel tank capacity is 1.2 gallons. Oil capacity is 0.8 quarts. 90 octane or higher gas is recommended. Hey, wake up. I'm done reading. I know user manuals can be incredibly boring. I'm just hoping you got some good information out of it. If you own a Chinese scooter, you should definitely subscribe to my channel and watch my repair videos. 
And that's it. We're done for now. Until next time, keep scooting.